it's sort of like on the surface level where you're conscious and you're you're on surface level right now you're watching uh a guy you probably subscribed to for playing minecraft for a lot of videos or whatever hello nipple landos here <laughs> i can't stop seeing it with this shirt Ever since this bloody kid at the fucking dog park pointed it out, he's like, you and I can see your nipples. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, so this video will be very heavily non-edited um, because I put most of my energy into working on some other stuff and I can barely move my neck right now. Um, but yeah, I essentially spent a huge amount of my energy credits, let's just say, and physical credits and mental credits, slightly animating a video I was working on for my OCD channel. So this one is just gonna be mostly freeballing it as I go. I experienced something called the Samadhi state. Essentially, it originates from ancient Indian and Hinduism literature and experiences. It's, it's where, it's one of the deepest states you can enter when doing meditation. Of course, the dog's going to start barking now. Whatever. So I've been studying transcendental meditation and trying to understand it um, and consciousness itself as well. And out of nowhere, I was laying down with my wife, Amanda Nanku. If you're watching this, I'm pushing this through to my subscribers this time. This isn't a video that I'm just passing underneath the notification stuff. So you'll know who, who I'm talking about. I was laying with her and then it's not like I was drifting off to sleep. I was actually focusing on this mantra. I was um, repeating myself. So the, let me grab something. Okay. I don't know how well you can see that, but oh fuck. It hurts to hold up. No, how about this? Does that work? Yeah, that works, but I can't fucking talk. What about this? No. All right. So, the basic concept we're trying to get at here. It, fucking hell, this is too big. <laughs> fucking. Fucking Jesus Christ. Okay, so, most of our Western society is focused on matter, science, surface level stuff, stuff we can see, molecules, electrons, protons. By the way, if this looks very familiar, you've probably seen a video on this. I basically went back, rewatched this video I've seen from someone called David Lynch, and he drew this out and it resonated so well that I, I went back and I sketched it out myself because it's, it's a perfect representation of what transcendental meditation is. Um, Put simply, transcendental meditation leads to happiness, clarity, believing in your ability to be yourself. It's like the medication, it's like inner medication you can just spawn out of nowhere. It's amazing. Um, so the m main gist, at least I, I get from a lot of our Western society, is we're stuck on this side so much. Um, if we can't perceive something right in front of us in the three-dimensional reality, like this fucking phone, for instance, also, this is a pretty neat trick. Put, rule out centimeters on your um, phone. If, if you're a craftsman or whatever, and you go to stores and shit, and you need to buy stuff and measure things all the time, it's actually quite neat. <laughs> I, st I stole that idea from Adam Savage, where he got uh, a ruler tattooed on his arm. Anyway, so I'm trying to view this and also think about it all at the same time, while also my neck is hurting. <laughs> the main concept here, I don't really want to go into it too much. If you're very fascinated by this, I'll leave a link to David Lynch's video. Um, it's not actually on his channel or whatever, but someone, it was like for a documentary, a bunch of students were recording. But essentially, most of us are here. Most of us don't even bother to go into this area in Western society, at least from my perspective, from what I've seen, especially us gamers. gamers. <laughs> um, one of the, there's many, many different types of meditation, but from, my experience so far, one of the most powerful forms of meditation is transcendental meditation. And transcendental meditation is essentially repeating uh, a mantra. So every time you get distracted or um, your mind drifts, you refocus on the mantra. And it's not exactly, you don't even need to say the mantra out loud. You just need to listen to the sound of the mantra in your mind. 
and keep refocusing on it and the longer you do it eventually um it's sort of like on the surface level where you're conscious and you're you're on surface level right now you're watching uh a guy you probably subscribe to for playing minecraft for a lot of videos or whatever that's surface level but when you sit down and don't have to close your eyes I'm, some very advanced people can just do this instantly sort of but i close my eyes and what essentially the mantra does is it travels down all the way past everything so science as far as science can go there is something called the unified field theory i believe that information has been highly distorted on the internet i believe that science has in fact figured out the unified field theory but it's just continued to be called a theory um it's this idea that everything is connected unified field theory in science western society in spiritual um in spiritual traditions etc this stuff's usually explained so when you go past this line so in science you go deeper and deeper into a, the visual aspect of reality and you go into like atoms quarks etc unified field theory is i think it was originally proposed by albert einstein but as you go deeper in the, in, a, in the spiritual the spiritual way of viewing this and the purely mental way of experiencing this uh, people have described this state as when you finally transcend you go all the way to the base layer of your consciousness or reality itself whatever the hell you want to call it um you when you transcend you reach this state that is almost impossible to put into words other than um what i experienced which was basically just love having a complete belief in yourself there's there's no elements of oh i just realized the whole time i wasn't even showing this all of it there's no elements of this stuff down here at all this stuff is completely absent. Tension, stress, anxiety, sorrow, depression, anger, fear, hate. All of these things are completely absent. It's the, I don't believe there's such a thing as positive and negative, but I do believe that there, there is an absence and presence of certain aspects that we believe that are positive and negative. And Jesus, fuck, this is hurting my neck so much. <laughs> uh, 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 this video is really long. I'm gonna have to edit it, damn it. Um, when you meditate essentially you can't get you can't perceive the unified field through scientific means that's the crux of it at least we can't yet with our technology the only way we can do it currently as far as we know as far as all of the, all of the technology that has been publicly available to us over the last 50 or so years yeah, we, we can't get to that stage with that, that technology. We have to use our consciousness. So that's what I've done. That's what many people have done. That's what has been described throughout history by many people as transcendence or ascending or enlightenment. This reaching this stage doesn't lead to enlightenment. It sort of opens the gate to enlightenment. So funnily enough, a video I did last year, I think it was last year, where I said I had a spiritual awakening. In a way, it was sort of correct, but at the, at the same time, it was more so like a, I don't know if the correct phrasing to use there is spiritual awakening, because this feels more like a spiritual awakening, what I experienced on July 8th, 2024. Experiencing this thing that people have called the one, um, I think it's been called the Atma as well. Hang on. Ah, here we go. ChatGPT comes in to, to save the day with its probably inaccurate information that I haven't got it to double check. So, oh, that's upside down. But is it? Different traditions have called it the self, the Purusha, uh, that's yoga philosophies. Jiva, in some contexts, refers to the individual soul that experiences life in the cycle of the samsara, distinct yet connected to the atma, the spirit, um, consciousness, and various philosophical and spiritual texts. I love parroting ChatGPT. It makes me feel like a fucking moron. But um, what's what's interesting to me is the realization that you don't need to spend ninety years in solitude on a mountain to gain this state. It's inherent within all of us. You just need to learn to do that. 
to, to do transcendental meditation to reach that stage and it was such a surreal experience it is very different from experiencing psychoactives i've experienced marijuana and i've experienced magic mushrooms those give you an artificial sense of different things this was very different um i've got something i've been trying to develop different frameworks to explain these things i've been experiencing so sort of like the way this is set up i've been trying to explain different states of consciousness or like the dream world lucid dreaming etc so essentially with that train of thought I will eventually want to make a video explaining my experiences with how there are these different sort of visualizations we can do with with what you experience with psychoactive compounds. I think all of it is connected in a way, but there is something so beautiful about reaching this state by yourself without anything, anything at all, because you can reach this sort of state in a way almost with psychoactives. I haven't tried them all, I haven't done them all, whatever you want to put it, so I don't know the full uh, full story there, but all I know is transcendental meditation is probably one of the most powerful things the average Joe can do to expand their consciousness, to see things in a way that our Western society refuses to see them. Someone's messaging me on my phone right now. Give me a second. So one of the most important lessons I think that I've learned is well, not one, many. You need to be courageous in the face of fear and fear can come in many forms. It can come in the form of ridicule. It can come in the form of opening up to people when you, you know there will be a large majority of those people who will heavily disagree with you or think you're a fucking nut job. The ability to just be yourself and open up and project your ideas and creations into the world regardless of what people think is one of the elements to being truly happy. And for a while I lost that, but it's coming back to me now. And I think I sort of knew that secret for a long time with my YouTube channel, but I wasn't aware of what I was doing. Um, in a way, that was sort of like a blissful unawareness. Um, but once you become aware of it, it just sort of all falls into place a little bit more. There's a lot more to unpack here. Feel free to leave um, some comments in the, in the, not the fucking description, in the uh, underneath the video. I'll be sure to get back to you if you're not a fuckwit and want to actually talk about this stuff. And you're not, if you're skeptical of a lot of this stuff, I probably wouldn't even just click off the video to be honest because skepticism is part of one of the things. Uh, skepticism is part of the waking mind. Um, in my little framework that I'm still working on, when I entered the, the consciousness or as, as I like to call it, like a, to sound like a bloody the um, intergalactic internet, <laughs> the stuff that links absolutely everything together. One of the the most clear things that came to me was what plagues sort of humanity itself. And a lot of it is, oh, fucking sake. God damn it. Is this stuff. Oh my God, I just wiped it all out. Anyway, is a lot of this stuff. And skepticism generally comes from fear of the unknown. It comes from logic. And logic is also something we use in the waking state our current three-dimensional reality everything we can perceive this little button was it since the 1700s since the since the shift from other paradigms to a primarily scientific empirical empirical tangible in front of us paradigm um skepticism has been embedded within our psyches let's just put it and it, it's one of the things that holds holds us back the most when trying to dive in, dive into this area. You need to be open. You need to, sure you can be not skeptical. It's more so you can have questions. You can, I mean, feel free to be skeptical if you want to. But in my opinion, if, if you're doing that, all you're doing is limiting yourself and your ability to perceive more and more information that is available out there from all other humans, the internet, etc., etc. Just be open to all information and take what you want. Don't be skeptical, just take what you want. There's no need to be skeptical. Just take the information you want and reject the rest of the information. 
um, there's a sense of judgment within skepticism. And all of this doesn't exist in the Samadhi state. This doesn't exist in the consciousness. It doesn't exist in the... The intergalactic network. <laughs> nah. Um, so, someone's gonna fucking screenshot that and put it on the private Discord I've got. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's... It's so cool. If you do want to get into this, I highly suggest you probably start with lucid dreaming, dream recollection, lucid dreaming. I feel like that was probably one of the catalysts that led me to be able to just do um, enter this Samadhi state. And by the way, I wasn't even intending to do it. It just happened. That's another thing with a lot of this meditation and consciousness stuff. If you try your best and try so hard and apply so much logic and you set aside time to like setting aside time and practicing is, is, is okay. But like, if you go hard into it and obsess over it, it doesn't happen. What happened with me, it's when you let go and you just let it flow and happen, then it happens to repeat myself and many words within that, no, within that tangent, tangential sentence. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to have to edit this. <laughs> Thanks for watching so much. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.